In this video, we will be introducing the concept of a vector. Now, in order to properly understand a vector quantity, one must first understand what is a scalar quantity. A scalar quantity has a measurable magnitude. A magnitude would be like a size. For example, time is a scalar quantity. Most of my videos are anywhere between 5 minutes and 20 minutes. Well, 5 minutes and 20 minutes would be a measurable quantity. Uh, distance. <clears throat> Uh, during today's pokey walk, I walked for approximately 2.5 kilometers. Uh, speed. As I was walking, I walked at an average of 3 miles per hour. Um, let's see, mass. I stepped on my scale today and it told me that I weighed... You know what, my scale sucks. So, let's not talk about that. A vector quantity. <clears throat> has a measurable magnitude and as soon as we attach a direction to that magnitude you're now dealing with a vector quantity. <clears throat> For example when I said that I walked a total of 2.5 kilometers, I never specified in what direction I went. As soon as you give a distance a direction, you now have what's referred to as a displacement. I mentioned that I was walking at about 3 miles per hour. Well, <clears throat> as soon as I attach a direction to that, I have what's known as a velocity. Mass typically has a direction as soon as you give it an acceleration. That is referred to as a force. Now, in all three of these cases, generally speaking, when we're trying to um, symbolize that we're dealing with something like this, we're going to use a directed line segment. <clears throat> Now, a directed line segment, well, let's start with a line segment. A line segment starts at one given point, goes in a straight line, and then ends at another point. This would be considered a, a line segment. It becomes a directed line segment as soon as we specify a starting point and an ending point by using an arrow going into the second point. P is known as the initial point. Q is known as the terminal point. We always go from initial point to terminal point. Now there are lots of different notations that we're going to use for things like vectors, but the most common one is going to be with a line segment joining the initial point on the left to the terminal point on the right. We use a little half arrow to indicate this. Now if we want to use just one variable to describe a vector, the most common one used for a vector is going to be the vector v. Now within the book and in the online homework, what they use are bolded letters. Unfortunately, my pen doesn't go in bold very well without, you know, making a mess. So that's why you typically won't see bold from me when it comes to writing these things. 